cool. We decided to head to the top where we felt the sheep had been pushed. Day four was a windy day, so that added movement from the bushes and trees could be the missing link to closing the distance on a mature ram. Dad waited below in the truck so that we could come off the mountain wherever we ended up. While working our way up the ridge, we quickly spotted sheep. We decided to go higher and get a closer look. It didn't take Doug long to decide he was going after them. I stayed several hundred yards back while Doug stalked in on the ramp. Doug was gone for nearly two hours. At one point I thought he'd busted them and they were going to spook, but instead they just headed up a little higher, making it easier for Doug to see them. Now Doug was somewhere up there out of sight to the right and the sheep were right there to the left. The sheep became alert and it seemed that they knew something was up.
He may have just drilled one, Dad. I've been videoing them all on this knob, and they all just bailed out of there, and then in three seconds, Doug was standing on the knob, and he put his arm up. Could never tell what's going on. I look like. Did you get a couple shots? No shots. The worst thing possible. Oh, I hit him. I did hit you? him, dude. Did you? Freaking right in front. Did you see me going across the? I saw you up on the top, right where they were standing, waving your hands. That's right after I shot. I went the direct. I got to 130 yards, and they're all just looking at me. So I'm like, I'm just gonna bend over and walk. So I did, and they just stared at me. I got to 85 yards. And the biggest ram was over here by himself, like this, quartering yeah. away from me. He was 85, so I freaking put it on him. Boom! I heard it. Just bam! I hit him. They all scattered. So I ran over there. I couldn't see any of the sheep. And then I saw him. He was right below me, like right like that. Yeah. Just got going really slow. And he laid down. He looked at me. He stood back up. Walked, walked, walked around that bowl. Worked his way up, laid down again, looked up at me. He, he lay down for about two minutes, stood back up. And you see that little rock pile on the top on the skyline? Yeah. He went around the hill. He went over the hill and around right there. That's the last you saw? Yep. Sweet. That's not the worst. We'll get him. I'm right in front of the leg, but it was quartering away, and I could see about that much arrow sticking out. I think about half the arrow in him. I think it's the biggest ram, the big one. It's either the biggest one or the second biggest one. But they're all staring at me, you know? Yeah. And I just thought, I went from 130 to 85, just walked right at him, like hunched over. He around. He didn't want to go up there. He graded around. And every time he'd go to start to go uphill, his back legs would go like real kind of stiff. And he's like, and he, he was just a, he never even walked fast, just slow. Like, I watched him until he went over the hill. He laid down twice and stood up, and then he just slowly, slowly walked up and over the top, over the other, under the west side. There's no hell. We could track him. We should. Oh yeah, I think he'll die. I just don't know how long it's gonna take him. We're trying to determine whether to go look now or wait for the till the morning, but with that storm coming. Oh, it's, a it's a ways. Me and Mark can get up there, but you know we're going to be up here in the dark. We do. My phone's dead. So that's the peak, right? Yeah. Should we go up there? I think so. Even if. Uh, if we jump him, he's going to have tracks. We can watch what he does again. And okay. Hey, Dad, you copy? Yeah. I think me and Mark are going to go up there. So you may, we'll radio, we'll radio you when we get up there to let you know what to go around the other side or what to do. Okay. Tell me. So right where you're standing. They were standing on that knoll. They're staring at me forever. And then the one to you started laying down. So I thought I'm just gonna have to do the direct approach. So I went from that tree to that tree. I cut 10 yards off. Sat there for a minute. There you go. 
from there. I just ducked way down. In the front. Like this, just hunched over. Little bite here, here. You came across this stuff? Yep. With them standing there? Yep. Really? Explosion. They just went bailing off of that. We're on him now. That's Work for that sucker.
Bitcoin Porto. Not quite, not yet. Flatland. Don't tease me. I got two quickly. treats. A wolf watermelon. Ooh. All right, that's all I have left. Got all the meat in our packs. We charged on the other side. <sighs> we radio dad told us to meet us over here on the west side. We had no idea there's that many ledges in the middle of the dark. Can't see where we're going. We think but we're it feels out. like we're about out to the flat land. We're hoping. We walk from the flat on one side to the flat on the other. Half the month. Packing a sheet. I don't have much more energy in me. That was a good little treat. Say it's a joy rancher. I'm in the top of the victory tree. Last couple hundred yards. Yeah. We can see. We're gonna live. <laughs> we can see the headlights. Oh, we made it. Dad saved our bacon. Oh my gosh, we made it. We're alive. Dad. I wasn't sure you were gonna make it. I've been happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I was wishing I could get up there and help you, but I don't know how. You saved our butts. <laughs>